The 1970s was an incredible decade to experience. Cars were solid pieces of steel, music was actually made with instruments, cartoons were great, toys were cool, and socializing was done in person. This was a time when you knew all your neighbors and you could easily run next door for a cup of sugar if you were out. I guess you could say that people were living life at its fullest. However, the decade certainly wasn't without some unique and challenging things. In this video, we'll have a look back on some funny things that we all experienced in the 1970s. In the 70s, people decided to have a strange pet, all thanks to a man named Gary Dahl. In 1975, he marketed pet rocks as the perfect pet and sold them for $4 each. During the next two years, he made $1.5 million and then the fad died. Maybe people finally realized that they could just be found on the ground and they were just wasting money. Sure, these lovable pets did not need to be bathed and they certainly were not going to pee in your house, but they could not provide the same amount of affection that a dog or cat could. The 1970s gave us a lot of clothing fabric options and yet we still chose polyester. Sure, it maybe felt a little cooler, but looking back, it didn't look so cool. Remember the polyester suits? They were multifunctional and got you ready for work, family reunions, and the discotheque. Of course, you were also going to need a super huge butterfly collar shirt to go along with it. Perhaps we wanted our rooms to look like science laboratories in the 1970s, or we just enjoyed spacing out a little. Either way, lava lamps were super popular. There's no doubt that there is something fascinating and relaxing when you watch the colored floating globs of lava. We spent hours just gazing at it as it was making various shapes. Mood rings were another far out item that many people had in the 70s. They were filled with thermotropic liquid crystals and the color would change based on the temperature. Tons of guys gave these to the girlfriends to help cut out the guesswork. If the ring was blue, then it meant that she was in a good mood, and if it was violet, then it meant that she was excited. It wasn't really all that accurate, but we sure hoped that it was. Since we are all missing these mood rings in our lives, I guess I have no idea how I feel about it. Stainless steel appliances that we see in the home today may look sleek, but they lack a little bit of style and personality. Every home in the 70s either had avocado green, harvest gold, copper tone, almond, or mustard yellow appliances in the kitchen. These were considered earth tones and they were also pretty popular throughout the rest of the home. Even the toilets in the bathroom were hardly ever just white. They came in an assortment of colors like pink, blue, yellow, and green. If you did happen to have a white toilet, then I'm sure that you had the color carpeted lid and tank cover. And who could ever forget about the colored toilet paper to match? Thankfully, that one never came in the copper tone brown. Shag carpets in the 70s were something that most people wanted, and really these were probably the very definition of luxury. They were super plush to lay on, and you could even make shag angels in them. The downside of these shag carpets was how difficult they were to maintain and keep clean. We were constantly raking and vacuuming this carpet just to keep it looking good. Never mind the fact that something like an earring could be lost in it forever. After a while, this carpet became a pain in the butt, especially when some gum or some cigarette burns found their way in it. Macrame was everywhere in the 70s home. A lot of women learned how to make hanging plant holders, pillow covers, drink coasters, and of course the ever popular owl that everyone seemed to have in their living room. These handcrafted works of art can now be found in many antique stores, although I'm not quite sure if anyone is buying them. At some point I'm sure that this will come back around, but so far I haven't seen anyone with it. The first episode of Saturday Night Live premiered on October 11, 1975, and it quickly became popular. 
Some of those early comedy rebels were John Belushi, Bill Murray, and Gilda Radner, just to name a few. Part of the fun of this show was watching it live and then reciting some of the sketches with your co-workers the following week around the water cooler or coffee pot. Today, this show is still live on the air, but many people have the ability to watch it later on different streaming services like YouTube. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of whether or not it has the same sort of comedy level or star power. If you were a man in the 70s and your shirt was not unbuttoned at least halfway down your chest, then you weren't that stylish. Of course, you were extra sexy and cool if you had some chest hair to show off to the ladies. Nowadays, most young men shave their chest, wax it, or get laser hair removal done. But I do wonder if this trend will ever come back into style. The 1970s gave us a lot of great music to listen to, from country, pop, soul, and rock. But one genre that dominated the clubs and airwaves was disco. Even bands that did not play disco like the Rolling Stones and Kiss felt that they should produce a disco song so that people would buy their records. Funny thing is, Kiss's disco song became one of their most popular and it was also the one that Gene Simmons hated the most. But this new genre of music didn't last too long. On July 12, 1979, a Chicago DJ detonated a dumpster full of disco records during a White Sox baseball game, and then a riot followed. This disco demolition kick-started a decline in the music, which continued into the 80s. However, disco lived on in some European markets. With all of that disco around, there had to be a popular dance, right? Well, the bump was an iconic dance which involved smashing your hips into your partners while rhythmically twisting from one side to the other. People practiced this until their hips were bruised. The hustle was another popular disco dance, but no bruising was involved. On December 23, 1975, U.S. President Gerald Ford signed the Metric Conversion Act, which officially declared the metric system to be the new preferred system of measurement. However, most of the U.S. declined to implement it. Now we are forever stuck converting miles into kilometers. In 1973, tennis had a match that came to be known as the Battle of the Sexes. A lot of people tuned in to see who was the best, men or women. In the end, it was a 29-year-old woman named Billie Jean King who beat out the 59-year-old man Bobby Riggs. In 1977, Jim Fix wrote the best-selling book, The Complete Book of Running. His goal was to explain the benefits of running and to show how it could solve all your health problems, which was the key to longevity. Ironically, Jim died of a heart attack at the age of 52 in the early 80s. But he did succeed in opening up a nationwide conversation about running, health, and life expectancy. Remember the Pinto in the 1970s? It certainly was not the best looking car that Ford ever produced, however its looks were not the worst part. If it got rear-ended in the right spot, it could instantly burst into flames, and that was a real problem. There were 27 Pinto-related deaths, but people bought them anyways. I guess you could say that they were a hot item. The oil shortages of the 1970s hit people pretty hard at times. And to make matters even worse, most of the vehicles people had were gas-guzzling cars. The gas stations had to ration fuel, and lines to fill up were all the way down the road, and people had to wait in line forever, it seemed. Some stations posted color-coded flags outside. Green indicated that they still had gas, while red alerted customers that they were completely out. Others posted signs saying that they were out, or how much gas you could actually get. It was not a pleasant time. Kids today have a whole plethora of ways to entertain themselves while in the car on road trips. But in the 70s, kids had to find ways of entertaining themselves by playing car or road games or just staring out the window of the back seat. Usually, parents could only stand them singing or pestering their siblings for so long. If they kept acting up, then they might hear, don't make me stop this car. Or do you want me to turn this car around? 
Many kids wanted the second option because the first one was not going to be fun. Kids in the 70s loved their bikes and it brought a sense of freedom that they couldn't get anywhere else. It was not uncommon to see kids on them every single day and especially so if the weather was nice. But kids were rough on these bicycles and eventually parts broke on them. The chain guard seemed to be one of the first ones to go, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but it was. You see, everyone in the 70s was wearing bell bottoms or flared leg jeans. These would frequently get caught in the chain and then disrupt your pedaling or even tear holes in your jeans. Kids today have no idea about the frustration with bell bottoms and a bicycle. In the 70s, life was completely different than anything that people experience today. None of us had our heads buried inside of our phones or on laptops. Sure, we watched television, but we also enjoyed being outside and spending time with friends and family. Even though the decade had some quirky things that we were all guilty of doing, it was still a great decade to be alive in. What are some other funny or quirky things about the 1970s? Do you have any experiences unique to the decade? Let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching.